Welcome to the Aero GS channel. I'm your host, Corey Barlotti. And in today's video, we're gonna go over different parts and connections when working with both corrugated and PVC drainage. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is PVC glues, primer, and corrugated tile tape. Now I have two different types of PVC glue here. I have a heavy duty clear PVC glue, and then I have a medium blue wet environment PVC glue. Now, a lot of people think these are glues. What these actually are, they're called solvent cements, meaning they don't glue the two pieces of plastic together. Instead, they melt the two pieces of plastic together via a chemical reaction. So this actually melts down a layer of PVC on either fitting and it glues them together. Now, this right here is primer and cleaner. So what this will essentially do is clean that pipe and get it ready to be glued. Now in drainage, with drainage pipe, you typically don't use a primer when working with yard drainage. This comes in handy whenever you're working with pressure. So if you're connecting a sump pump line together, the discharge line for a sump pump, you want to make sure that you use a primer on it because that sump pump line is going to be under pressure. Now with normal drainage, that water is not under pressure. So you do not need to prime every single pipe and fitting when working with just normal drainage pipe. So save your primer for when you're working with anything that's under pressure. Now, the difference between these two here, this heavy duty clear PVC cement, one, obviously it's clear. So you're not gonna see anything left behind on your pipe after you're done using it. Unlike the blue, you're gonna have a blue residue that's left behind that can be easily seen. Now, this one is for wet environments, meaning if you're working in a light drizzle or if you're working in a damp, wet trench, you're going to want to use something that is going to work in those conditions. That's where this comes into play. You're going to want to use this solvent cement for that. If you try to use a normal PVC solvent cement, such as this clear heavy duty one, yes, this is very strong. This stuff is this stuff is really good. You get this on your skin, it burns. Whereas you get this on your skin, it actually doesn't burn. This one is really heavy duty, but in wet, damp environments, this will not fuse those two pieces of plastic together. This will. So whenever you're working in a wet environment, make sure you're using something that's rated for it. If you're working in a dry environment, if it's not damp or wet, go with the, the heavy duty clear PVC cement. All right, another difference with these two glues here, the working time varies greatly. This particular glue, you have about eight to 10 seconds to work with it, meaning the pipe will not bond instantly together where you can't make adjustments if you need to. This one, on the other hand, this bonds within like two seconds. This bonds super quick. You have no working time with this at all, basically. So you need to make sure that when you push those two fittings together, that pipe in the hub, that it is exactly where you want it to be because once it glues, you are not getting this stuff undone. All right, so just for example purposes, this is orange CPVC cement. This is meant to glue water lines made out of CPVC. This is a piece right here, just as an example. Now, you should not see any drainage installer using this cement on normal PVC pipe because it is not meant for that. It's meant for only CPVC water lines. Now, this is corrugated tile tape. You want to use this tape anytime you're making a connection between a corrugated pipe and a fitting or a corrugated pipe and the bell end of another corrugated pipe. Once you snap this together all the way, you're gonna to wanna to wrap this tile tape around this connection at least seven to eight times, probably about this wide, just to make sure that you have a good solid connection. What this is going to do is it's going to keep roots from entering that seam and it's going to keep this pipe from leaking, which also will help keep the roots away from your system. Anywhere there's leaks in your system, roots are gonna sniff that out and then they're gonna to try to get into that pipe. Now, obviously for demonstration purposes, I'm using a piece of, of knife cut corrugated pipe. But if this was a solid corrugated pipe going into a connection, you wanna use your tile tape. So 
anybody installing a drainage system should not be using duct tape or electrical tape on that system for any reason. Duct tape deteriorates in the ground. It does not hold up, so this should not be used. And electrical tape is too thin to make a good connection, and it does not hold up well underground either. It comes apart. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about some common PVC connections in drainage. So you have Schedule 40 PVC, and you need to adapt over to either SDR 35 or Schedule 20 PVC. So the best way to make this connection is to buy a Schedule 40 to thin wall PVC adapter. That's gonna simply slide over your Schedule 40 and it's gonna slide onto your SDR or Schedule 20, whatever you're working with, and you solvent weld those together and you have your connection. But let's say you can't find this adapter for some reason or you don't have it on hand. There's some other ways to make this connection without having to use one of these. So I have a SDR 35, 45 degree elbow right here. The hub of this, of these thin wall fittings will actually slip onto schedule 40 fittings like so. And they fit pretty tight and you can glue these two together obviously. And now you have your SDR 35 or schedule 20 fitting going to your schedule 40 fitting and schedule 40 fitting can go right onto your schedule 40. And you just made your connection going from thin wall PVC to schedule 40 PVC. So that's another way to make that connection. Now, the final way to make that connection is with a Fernco or commonly known as a rubber boot or a no hub is a rubber coupling with pipe clamps on it. This simply would just slip onto your schedule 40 PVC. Let me see if I can get it here without loosening the pipe clamps. So once you have your rubber boot or fern co on your schedule 40 pipe, you would just simply take your SDR 35 or your schedule 20 pipe and slide it in the other end. And then you would tighten down these hose clamps. And then that is a third way how to make this connection. So another common connection that you'll see in the drainage industry is going from corrugated to PVC, specifically SDR 35 or Schedule 20 PVC. Now to make this connection, they sell an adapter fitting that is barbed on one end and that it can be solvent welded on the other end. Now this just simply snaps into place on your corrugated and then you would either use a fitting or you would use a coupling the solvent weld on the other side and then that would connect into your drainage pipe and that's how you make that connection. Now a better way to make this connection is to use your fern co or rubber boot and tighten your pipe clamps down on either end. The reason why this is a better way to make this connection, if you take a look inside here, this actually kind of reduces the inner pipe diameter when you snap this into place. Unlike your rubber boot that goes on the exterior, that doesn't reduce the inner diameter. So this is actually a better way to make this connection between the two. If you take a look inside the actual adapter that goes from corrugated to a PVC coupling, then to PVC, you can see what I mean, how it reduces the inner diameter. All right, so to go from your gutter downspout into a PVC drainage system, you can use one of either adapters. This particular adapter is easier because the adapter size that goes onto the gutter downspout is bigger opposed to this one. The problem with this one though is the hub at the bottom sticks out so you can't get it as flush against the wall as you can with this one. So depending on the situation, we'll use either of the two and whatever works best, even though this one is a little bit more difficult to get on because it is a smaller adapter, but these just simply fit on the end of your PVC pipe and then this adapts into your gutter downspout. Now the best way to adapt from a gutter downspout into a PVC drainage system is gonna be the FDM vented cleanout filter. Now, these are awesome. He put a lot of time and thought into making this. That's the French drain man. So you have a trap door right here that opens up that reveals your leaf catching screen. That's where all the debris will get caught and you simply just clean that out every once in a while. 
There's a drain plug in there that you can pull out. So you can put a garden hose down the line, a sewer snake, or a camera if need be. And the other thing that is very cool about this is it's vented at the top and it has a nice flush back. So it fits right up against your wall into your gutter downspout. Now, if you're a PVC guy and you're using PVC, this simply just slides in the top, pushes down, put a little set screw right there, and there you have it, that's it. So let's go ahead and talk about some common corrugated connections, specifically the coupling. So I have three different corrugated couplings in front of me here. I have an external bell corrugated coupling. I have another external corrugated coupling. This one is flat. And then I have an internal corrugated coupling. Now, the differences between these three, these two connect externally, meaning the pipe, there's not gonna be anything going on the inside of that pipe. So that's how your bell coupling would connect together. That it, You would push them all the way until you hear these snap. I'm not gonna do that just because I don't feel like having to pull them apart, but that's how these would connect. Now, I find that the, this bell coupling is the best one that you can use for corrugated. You wanna make sure that you use your tile tape. I can't stress that enough. Make sure that you tile tape these seams up. As you can see on the inside, there's nothing impeding the flow of water when you use an external coupling like that. Now, this particular external coupling, again, it's the same thing. It connects the two on the outside, but this is just, it's a cheaper, it's just a cheaper version of this, essentially. You know, I would opt for using this over this any day. This has a lot more strength than this one does. Now, if you're building a French drain system and it's going to be encased with geofabric and stone, you could get away with just snapping one of these on, throwing it in there and calling it a day. But if you're going to be using solid, solid corrugated pipe, definitely go with the bell coupling. Now, your internal coupling. This internal coupling, this doesn't really belong in yard drainage. This was made for agriculture. This was made so that when the tile plows are laying the long corrugated pipes into the ground, the coupling doesn't get hung up on their machines because this would be on the outside and it has a snag point. It could get caught on their machine as they're laying this pipe in the ground. So they came out with the internal coupling that snaps on the inside, like so. That way there's nothing that that machine can snag on and they can keep laying it. So the internal coupling really does not belong in yard drainage. You wanna stay away from these and you wanna to stick to using these if you're gonna be using a corrugated system. Another thing that I've seen guys do, instead of using the proper coupling to connect two pieces of corrugated pipe together, is I've seen them cut a piece of corrugated off, they cut it down the middle, and then they simply fold it in like this. And they stuff it in one end and then stuff the other pipe on it. Now, <laughs> I, I don't know, I'm not really a fan of doing things like this. I mean, I guess I can see why it would work. So we're gonna, we're gonna just try it here. So we got it stuffed in that one end, and now we're gonna stuff this end into it. See if I can even get it. Okay, so that, that's what I've seen some guys do. Now, I, I don't know. To me, I would not do it like that. I would definitely use a coupling if I'm gonna connect two pieces of corrugated pipe together because honestly, all this does is it makes the inner diameter of the pipe smaller and it creates two snag points on either end. So I really would not do this. So as you can see down into this corrugated pipe where we made this makeshift coupling out of another piece of corrugated pipe, I mean, there's just, there's two snag points now on either end and there's a seam also that runs down. So I just, I don't feel like that's a good idea to be doing 
to connect your corrugated systems together if you're gonna be using this type of material. Now, if you're going from a corrugated system to a gutter downspout, they do make an adapter for that and it simply just pushes inside your corrugated pipe and then that would hook onto your gutter downspout and you would just put a couple of set screws on either side to hold that in place. So another good way to do it is the FDM leaf filter. That connects to corrugated as well and it simply just snaps right on there. All right guys, so I hope you gained some knowledge out of watching this video and you saw how some of these common connections work. And remember, whenever you're building a system out of corrugated, if you are going to use this big box store corrugated, um, make sure you wrap it good with tile tape to keep those roots out of the joints. Now, they, they make a corrugated right here specifically for residential yard drainage. This is the FDM high octane drain pipe. It's the French drain man. That is the type of corrugated you want to be using for residential yard drainage. Not this, because this is for agriculture use. But if you are going to use this, I hope some of these tips helped in making the connections. And until next time, this is Arrow GS signing off.